Okay, this week our skill for spelling and phonics is um, base words and endings, adding endings to words. So today I'll begin by saying a word and I'm going to add a sound to the end to make a new word. Listen, my word is hop. Now listen as I add the ing sound to the end of hop. I get the word hopping. I say it, you say it, hopping. I say it, you say it, hopping. Hopping. Okay, now add the ing to the, and now we're going to add the e, or I'm sorry. Now my next word is wish. I say you say it, wish. Wish. We're going to add the ing sound to the end of wish, and we get the word wishing. I say it, you say it, wishing. Wishing. Okay, now we're going to add the t sound to the end of hop, and I get the word hop. Okay, so I say you say it hopped. I say you say it hopped. Okay, now my next word is hope. We're going to add the t sound to the end of hope. Let's say that word together. Hoped. 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 Now we're going to add the d sound to the end of roll. I get the word rolled. I say it, you say it rolled. Okay, now we're going to add the d sound to the end of hum. I say it, you say it hummed. I say it, you say it hummed. And then now we're going to add the id sound to the end of my next word. My word is wanted. I say it, you say it wanted. I say it, you say it wanted. Wanted. Now we're going to add the d sound to the end of fade, and we get the word faded. 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 Okay, so notice that when we added the t, d, and id sounds, those are all the sounds that we know that ed make at the end of the word. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this word here on my word card. Take a look here at this word on my word card. Okay, so my word here on my word card is tape. I say it, you say it, tape. I say it, you say it, tape. Okay, now, I want to make, now notice that my word tape ends with a silent E. It's got that E at the end that lets me know that the vowel before it makes the long vowel sound. Okay, so the, that E at the end of the word tape is silent. Okay, I don't say the sound of E at the end of tape. The sound of E at the end of the word tape is silent. It just lets me know that the vowel before it makes the long vowel sound. That's all that that E does, it's silent. So when a word ends with a silent letter, like a silent E, before I add my ending, before I add the ing to make that word taping, I take off the E and then add my ing. So my word is tape and I want to make it taping. So when I write it, I don't write the E, I take off the E and then add my ing, and that word is taping. I say it, you say it, taping. Taping. Now, when I want to make the word tape into taped to show that it happened in the past tense, I don't really have to take off the e because I'm going to add an ed anyway, right? So I don't really have to take off the e. I leave my e there, but I just add my d, and I get the word taped. I say it, you say it, taped. taped. Now notice that that ed in the word taped makes the sound t. Okay, so that word taped, at the end, that ed makes the sound t. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. Okay, so there's taping. Okay, now here's my root word or base word. My root word or base word is fade. I say it, you say it, fade. fade. I say it, you say it, fade. Okay, I see that there's a silent E at the end of fade. I don't say the sound of the E. But when I want to add my ED, I don't have to take off the E because I'm just going to write it again. But I add my ED and I get the word faded. But if I wanted to make fade, fading, I would take off the E and then add my ing. 
Wait, and I get the word fading. I say, you say it, fading. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Okay, my word is close. I say it, you say it, close. Close. Again, there's a silent E at the end. I need the two of you to stop pushing and pulling the table because I've already moved the table where it needs to be this morning and the two of you keep pushing and pulling it. That is not safe, especially with a sneeze guard in the middle because that sneeze guard could fall right over and hit one of the two of you in the head. Please stop pulling the table. It's not safe. I say you say it close. Close. Now, when I want to make close, closing, I take off the E and add my ING and I get the word closing. I say you say it closing. Closing. When I add my ED, I just add my ED and I get closed. I say you say it closed. Closed. Okay, my next word is chase. I say you say it chase. Chase. I want to make it chasing. I take off the E and add my ing and I get the word chasing. I say you say it chasing. Chasing. I say you say it chasing. Chasing. Okay, when I add my ed at the end, I get the word chased. I say you say it chased. Chased. I say you say it chased. Chased. Logan and Lily, give yourselves points for participating. Thank you for paying attention and participating. Okay, if I draw your stick, you need to segment and blend our word. We need to keep in mind that when I add the ing, the reason I have the first word there is so you remember what my root word or base word is. Okay, so you need to remember what the root word or base word is when we add the ing. Braxton, segment and blend this word, please. The e at the end lets me know that the vowel before it makes the long vowel sound. Abram, please stop. That noise is not necessary. Makes the long O sound. Say, segment and blend it. Say the sound. Long O. O. What's my word? Braxton, take your mask down. Okay. Segment and blend it. This makes the long O sound O. Segment it out. Huh? O. Oh. Thank you. Okay, add my ing to the end. What word do I get, Dylan? Hoping. I get the word hoping. Notice I take off the e before I add my ing. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Yazel, what's this word then? I have hope, hoping. I add an ed to the end. It makes the sound t at the end. Hoped. Say the word, Yazel. Hoped. Say the word one more time. Hoped. Hoped. Okay. Now, I wrote the root word or base word next to this one. I wrote the root word or base word next to this one. Abby, segment and blend this word, please. Here's my root word or base word. What's my root word or base word? Use. Use. Okay. So segment and blend the word, please. Use. Use. Using. Thank you. Alexa. I didn't hear you, honey. Use. And Mario, segment and blend this word, please. Please remove your mask from your mouth. It's a long A because there's an E at the end, so it makes a long A sound. Thank you. And my last one, Faven, segment and blend this word, please. Mixing. Now notice, did I have to take off an E in mixing? No, because the word mix in itself is just M-I-X. There's no E at the end. So that's why I underline that. There's no E at the end of mix. So if my word doesn't end in an E, then I don't have to take off the E to add my ING. I don't have to take off my E to add my ING if it already ends in one word. 
okay? Or with one without a silent E. That's not necessary, please stop. Adeline, say my symbol on this word, please. Itched. Pitched. Say it. Pitched. Scarlet, what's this word? Leo. Marina. Eli. Sound it out. I'm ing. The next one, Abram. Standing. standing. Good. Now that's an example of, does the word stand end in an E? No, it's S-T-A-N-D. So I don't have to take off the E because it doesn't end in an E. Move it up a little bit. Logan. Well, let's look at it again. Plant is planted. Lily, my next word. Thinking, and thinking is the same. Thinking doesn't end with an E, so I don't have to take off the E before I add my I-N-G. Daniela. Catch. And Kira, the last one. I'll move it up a little bit. Puffit. Good. Let's take a look at our sentences. I'll read it, point to the words, and then you'll read it with me. Moss was afraid of falling at the skating rink. Read it with me. Moss was afraid of falling at the skating rink. My next one. I'll read it. You'll read it after me. Dad kept hoping. You're not reading it right now. I'm reading it first. Dad kept hoping that people would be coming to the game. Read it with me. Dad kept hoping that people would be coming to the game. Uh, okay, like I said this week, our anchor text is what we call a folktale. A folktale is a story that oftentimes tells us why something is the way that it is. So this week, our anchor text is titled, How Chipmunk Got His Stripes. And our skill this week is understanding characters. So one of the things that we're going to be spending a lot of time on this week is talking about character traits. Why characters do and say and think the things that they do and what those character traits and events tell us about the character. So in our anchor text, How Chipmunk Got His Stripes, the characters, Bear and Brown Squirrel, speak and act like people. Think about what they say, think, and do when something happens to them in the story. Pay attention to this text evidence. Paying attention to this text evidence can help you understand what each character is like. So we're going to be using a chart like this to help us identify the character, whether it be bear or little brown squirrel, the event in the story, and what that tells us about the character. Because different events in the story, characters can react to the same event in different ways. Okay, our strategy this week is summarizing. When we summarize a story, we stop and tell only the most important parts. We don't tell everything that happened in the story. We just stop and tell the most important parts of the story, the most important events of our story. So this week, our big picture topic is what we call traditional tales. Okay, folk tales are oftentimes thought of as traditional tales. Traditional tales are stories that people have been telling for many years. Some traditional tales are made up stories about how or why something is the way that it is. Characters in traditional tales usually learn a lesson. This is called the moral of the story. When we read How Chipmunk Got His Stripes, think about what Bear and Brown Squirrel learn and what the story explains. So please take out your journeys books and turn